Okay, I'm Dana Now from the University of Maryland, and I'll start out by telling you about a technical result that I hope you'll find kind of fun, and then at the end I'll tell you how it all relates to Judah Pearl. Um, so, um, zero-sum perfect information games. Uh, a few examples. Uh, this includes most card games, such as Bridge here. A few board games, such as the game of Battleship, where you're trying to uh, sink your opponent's ships and you don't know where they are, and Kriegspiel Chess, which I'll say a little bit more about soon. Um, Kriegspiel is like a combination of chess and battleship. The pieces start in their own normal places, but you cannot observe your opponent's moves. So the only way to get any inf information about where their pieces are uh, are if you take one of their pieces, they take one of your pieces, they put your king in check, or you make an illegal move. Um, Kriegspiel was developed in the 1800s by a Prussian military officer. A number of the European militaries used it as a training exercise for officers during that century. So in that sense, it's the granddaddy of all modern war games. Um, the size of an information set, which is the set of all states that you might be in in the game. Here are some comparisons. In chess, one, you know exactly what state you're in. Texas Hold'em, which is the most popular uh, version of poker, about 1,000. Bridge, around 10 million. Kriegspiel, around 10 trillion. So there's a lot of uncertainty about uh, just what the state of the board is. Furthermore, in a game like Bridge or Poker, the uncertainty comes from the deal of the cards. And you can put a probability distribution over how the cards might have landed in the deal. Um, and uh, that makes it easier to do some of the calculations. In Kriegspiel, all of the uncertainty is a result of being unable to see the opponent's moves. And there's no clear probability distribution over those moves. So that makes things more difficult also. So we put together a recursive formula for searching over the information sets that I mentioned a minute ago. I'm going to skip the technical details, uh, except to point out that um, it includes an explicit model of the opponent, namely the opponent's strategy, which ends up being here in the formula. Um, so given this strategy, it will compute your best response to that strategy. Well, where do we get this model from? Um, let's backtrack a minute to perfect information games. Um, how many of you are familiar with the Minimax formula? About half of you. Those of you who aren't, don't worry about it. Um, main point I want to make is that, that one part of this formula is sort of a paranoid model of the opponent. Uh, you're assuming that the opponent is always going to choose a move that is worst for you, or at least your estimate of what is worst for you. The criticism of that model is that the opponent may not actually have the ability to decide what that move is. But in several decades of experience with game research, in games like Checkers, Chess, Othello, whatever, uh, this assumption has worked so well that people just sort of take it for granted. Um, so how does it generalize to imperfect information games? Um, well, during an imperfect information game, if you're playing it, your, game, your moves are part of some pure strategy that I'm going to call sigma 1. Uh, even if you're playing a mixed strategy, well, during the course of the game as you play it out, what you're doing is you are picking your strategy sigma 1 at random from some probability distribution. So uh, one can generalize the paranoid model to say that we're assuming that the opponent somehow knows in advance which pure strategy you're going to pick before you actually pick it and chooses uh, their own strategy as the best response to that. And so you want to choose your strategy that will make their uh, best response uh, as good as possible for you. That gives this formula here. And in perfect information games, it reduces just to the Minimax formula. OK, here's another opponent model, the overconfident opponent model. Um, those of you who can't see what that looks like in the back of the room, this is a cat trying to attack an eagle. Um, the overconfident model assumes that the opponent is making moves completely at random. Um, and that produces this formula here. Uh, we have a theorem uh, showing that if you use this model, surprisingly enough, in a perfect information game, it produces exactly the same play that the uh, paranoid model produces. 
uh, but not in perfect information games. It'll do things differently there. Um, the reformulas are recursive and can be implemented as game research algorithms. The main problem is that the time complexity is doubly exponential, but you can use stochastic sampling to generate a randomly uh, generated sample of the information set and do it that way. So our implementation, uh, called KBOT, won a silver medal at the 11th International Computer Games Olympiad. That is less impressive than it sounds. Um, there were two programs competed in Kriegspiel. <laughs> um, one was by Paolo Ciancarini at the University of Bologna. The other one was ours. His got the gold medal, ours got the silver medal. There's a few other Kriegspiel programs around. I recall at the time that we were trying to persuade Stuart Russell to uh, enter his in the competition, and uh, he didn't feel like it was quite far enough along to enter. Um, and there hasn't been another one yet uh, so far, so uh, maybe we're going to be the silver medalist forever. I don't know. Um, in addition to the Olympiad, we did some experiments on Kriegspiel. Uh, we played the overconfident versus paranoid strategies head to head, and we also played both of them versus HS. HS was the best of our previous Kriegspiel algorithms. Those algorithms were based on, on what I'll uh, call as a perfect information Monte Carlo, Carlo rollout. What they did was they treated Kriegspiel as if it were a collection of perfect information games and generated random chess positions that were consistent with the available information, did an ordinary minimax search on each of those, and then averaged the results. That is a fairly standard kind of approach in a number of games. It has some theoretical problems. In particular, it cannot reason about moves whose purpose is to gather information, because if you're assuming this is a perfect information game, then you already have only all the information you need. Despite this problem, they have worked very well in games like Bridge, so they have become more or less a standard technique in such games. Well, in Kriegspiel, uh, we played information set search against HS at three different search depths. Uh, without going into details, it outperformed HS in almost all of the cases. Um, the only exception was at uh, depth one, the paranoid search did a little bit uh, worse than HS did. Um, in all of the other cases, both of these did better than HS. Overconfident was always doing better than paranoid. Um, one possible reason, this is uh, speculative, we haven't uh, tried to follow up on this, is that the information gathering moves are probably more important in Kriegspiel than they are in a game like Bridge, and so it made more of a difference to be able to do the information set search. Uh, furthermore, we played overconfidence versus paranoid head-to-head -head at uh, lots of different combinations of search steps. Sometimes uh, they were searching to the same depth along this diagonal. Sometimes one was searching deeper, sometimes the other was. In every one of these cases, the overconfident model uh, did better than the paranoid model. Um, we tested these things head to head in some other games as well. Uh, one was P Games, which was a board splitting game invented by Judah Pearl. N Games, which is a modified version of P Games. Uh, Kala, which is an ancient Af African game. We modified each of these to hide some fraction of the opponent's moves so that it would be a, an imperfect information game. And we varied two parameters. One was the branching factor, the number of moves that you have at each state in the game. The other was the hidden factor, in other words, the fraction of opponent moves that were hidden. Here are the experimental results. Um, basically, what we see here is that um, at zero hidden factor, this point on each of the graphs, Overconfident and paranoid played identically. So that verifies that uh, theorem that I gave you earlier, that uh, overconfident is identical to minimax when there's perfect information. Second, uh, when there is uh, some of the moves hidden, overconfident in at almost all cases is doing better than paranoid. Uh, this is the score for overconfident. Uh, it's above zero, so overconfident is doing better. The only exception is down here in um, Kala, when a few, when a small fraction of the information is hidden, um, the score is below zero, which indicates that paranoid is doing better. Okay, conclusion, the paranoid model in almost all of the cases didn't work as well as the overconfident model. So we can conclude from that that in games where a lot of the information is hidden, the opponent 
doesn't have enough information to make the move that's worst for you, and so it's appropriate to assume that the opponent will make mistakes. Second, both the information set search models work better than HS, and I told you what my speculation is uh, about that earlier, that it's important to have a uh, way to reason about information gathering moves. So next question is, how does all of this relate to Judah Pearl? And I'll, I have a story about that. But before I do that, I have a question for you, Judah. Over the past 30 years, I have heard your first name pronounced at least half a dozen different ways. And I've heard four or five of those pronunciations just this morning. How do you like to pronounce it? It's a rough set. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Any member qualifies. OK. I'll continue the way I've been doing it then. OK. so. Um, first, I mentioned that the P games that we used uh, were invented by Judah Pearl in 1980, and I've used them a number of times in my research. Second, in his book on heuristics, Pearl suggested the idea of using some uh, propagation rules in game trees other than the minimax formula, and that was one of the things that motivated us to develop this information set search <coughs> idea. Third, um, back in 1979 or 1980, uh, I had just started as a young assistant professor at the University of Maryland. You found out about my PhD work. And I still remember the phone conversation where you called me up long distance because you were excited and wanted to talk about it. Part of the reason that I remember it is I was kind of shocked. Uh, what you said was that you had heard about my work and that during the past four or five days you had been duplicating it. I was thinking, it took me how many months to do it? And he did it in four or five days. <laughs> Um, the second thing, I was very flattered that you uh, liked it and that you wanted to do things with it. And uh, you wrote several papers extending the work, and it also ended up being uh, the focus of a chapter in your uh, book on heuristics. Um, that certainly was a big boost to my career when I was starting out, and I have felt grateful for that ever after. Thank you, Judah.